In this video, we're going to test how a number of games perform on the new Apple M1 Max chip. Pause the video now for the specs of my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Light on my feet. Baldur's Gate 3 is currently the best native ARM AAA Mac game to test on M1. There are a number of native ARM indie games, but not much on the caliber of this one. It's also one of the few games on Mac with EDR support. EDR is Apple's high dynamic range representation and rendering pipeline. Baldur's Gate 3 is in early access, and patch 6 is now live for Intel Macs. Patch 6 isn't ready for M1 Max though. For this presentation, I'm showing patch 5. Patch 5 still has amazing performance on M1 Max, and it shows the true power of this GPU. At 1440p Ultra, the game gets 120 FPS on average. It can drop sometimes, especially during combat scenes though, but it's not that bad. And at 4K, the game gets 60 FPS at Ultra. Sadly, my capture card, which is analyzing the frame rate for these games, can only track 120 FPS up to 1440p. Alvarez told me the game is actually getting above 60 FPS at 4K Ultra and will do even better in patch 6. Larion Studios, Alvarez, and the Apple Metal Engineering team will soon be adding AMD FSR to Baldur's Gate 3 in patch 6, which is a new upscaler solution. This will boost the game's frame rate even more. It's true AMD FSR runs best on AMD Mac cards, but Alvarez told me they will run it on Apple Silicon via adapted algorithms. Metro Exodus was originally optimized for the first gen M1 chip. While the game hasn't seen specific updates for the new M1 Max chip yet, it still runs pretty well. So at native resolution, high preset, we're seeing around 40 to 50 FPS on average. If you want over 80 FPS, I suggest playing at 1900 by 1200 or 1080p. The game still looks pretty good at this resolution and the higher FPS definitely helps for the combat sequences. Metro Exodus isn't fully native to M1 either. While the translation layer for a used is optimized for Metal 2.3, they ran into issues with Metro Exodus when two complex systems came together in practice. So we saw at WWDC 21 that in this case 4A Games and the Apple Metal Engineering team utilized Molten VK on top of the Metal framework to get the game to perform well on Mac. This also isn't the new ray tracing version, but I do know that new APIs have been added to ray tracing in macOS 12, so maybe we could see ray tracing added to Metro Exodus on Mac in the future. Despite being released in 2018, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is still one of the best blockbuster titles available on Mac. It's also enhanced further by EDR support. Shadow of the Tomb Raider comes with a handy benchmark feature that we can use to see the average FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider also supports Apple's Quartz Debug, which is a frame rate measurement tool for developers. Sadly, not many games support this tool in full screen yet. At 1080p high, the game gets 96 FPS. I would play at this setting if you're looking for performance and graphics coming together, if that makes sense. At 1080p medium, the game gets 100 FPS, but obviously it doesn't look as great. At 1440p high, the game gets 76 to 80 FPS. This is a really good graphics quality to choose if you prefer graphics over performance. And finally at 4K high, the game gets 42 FPS. As most of you know, Boot Camp is no longer supported on Apple Silicon Macs and we're still not certain if it ever will be in the future. One option to play Windows games on M1-based Macs is Parallels 17. 
Since I have the Pro version of Parallels, I can assign 16 gigabytes of memory and six cores to the virtual box. You should only assign half of your CPU cores and half of your RAM, otherwise you'll starve your Mac of resources. Overwatch is kind of compatible with Parallel 17. It's one of the most popular multiplayer FPS games out there too, and like so many of you, I wish Blizzard would port it to Mac. But here is some sort of a way you can play it. At pretty much any resolution, all the way up to 4K, the game can get up to and over 100 FPS. But there is major stutter here, even if you lower the graphics quality. I can't get rid of it. You'll find this is a reoccurring issue with many games under Parallels. Almost all of you asked to see GTA 5 in this list. I'm playing GTA 5 at 1080p normal settings and it's aiming for 30 to 35 FPS. But just like other M1 configs, it has noticeable FPS drops. Mind you, it's a tiny bit better here. Another option to play Windows games on Mac is Crossover 21. The benefit of Crossover over Parallels is that it's not an emulator. It translates Windows commands into Mac commands. Molten VK was also added in 2020 by Code Weavers to improve performance. You can run games using DXVK, which is a Vulkan-based translation layer for D3, D11 titles. Resident Evil 3 has great performance, despite the issues with shaders. I'm playing at 4K, graphics priority, and we're seeing about 30 to 40 FPS, which is pretty good for a game that isn't even native. I can lower the resolution and graphics quality, but the frame rate doesn't improve for some weird reason. Crossover also can sometimes have considerably better performance than Parallels, as it's not running games through emulation. For example, here is GTA 5 running under Crossover 21 nightly build. While the performance here has more than doubled, you'll still see some stuttering from time to time. I found that it tends to go away or reduce after about five minutes of playtime under crossover, while it kind of never leaves in parallels. In the past, you had to pirate GTA 5 to get it working under crossover, but a fix has been discovered. I've left a video tutorial from Andrew Tai in the video description on how to install GTA 5 on crossover 21. Some other great games that kind of work are Dark Souls 3, which gets 60 FPS at 1080p high settings. Devil May Cry 5 will see about 50 to 70 FPS at 1080p high. And The Witcher 3 plays at 1920 by 1200 and gets 47.9 FPS. I don't want this video to be filled with Windows games, so moving forward for this video, let's just focus on Mac games. The Pathless is the most high-end game on Apple Arcade. The Mac version is also on par with the next-gen PS5 version graphically. The iOS version is capped at 30 FPS, while on Mac it's capped at 60. However, I can't even get the game to hit a locked 60 FPS, even at low settings at 1080p. What's even weirder is that the game has no medium settings, at least for me, only low and high. This performance isn't great, obviously, especially when compared to most other games on this list. The Pathless is not native on M1 though, it's running through Rosetta, and it has awful optimization on practically every Apple device out there, to be honest. Many Apple Arcade games have been updated this year for the ARM architecture, so please, Giant Squid and Apple, update the Pathless. Just like on M1 last year, Dying Light on the new M1 chips will tell you only AMD Radeon GPUs are supported, but it's up and working here. Plus, on the 14th of May, 
2021 Techland updated Dying Light from OpenGL to the Metal API on Intel and Apple Silicon based Macs. The game is quite old now, so it's not going to be as demanding on modern Mac hardware anymore. For example, you can easily play at either 1080p or 1440p for that matter, high, and the frame rate is typically well over 100 FPS. 2160p or 4K is also very acceptable, always getting a little over 60 FPS. Techland just ported this game to Switch, which uses the ARM architecture. Now that they are familiar with ARM and the Metal API, I hope that they can make this game fully native on M1 in a future update. Please. Speaking of OpenGL, Alien Isolation is one of the few AAA Mac games that is still running on OpenGL on Mac. What you're going to find with OpenGL games is that they may have mixed performance on Apple Silicon. For example, at 1080p Mac settings, Alien Isolation is only getting 50 to 65 FPS. Like Techland, Feral Interactive recently ported this game to Switch. I'd love to see Feral update this game to Metal and ARM64 on Apple Silicon, but maybe I'm asking too much. This is my second favourite game of all time after all, and I just don't want to see it disappear for Mac. So many of you wanted to see this one. To be honest, I, I don't play this game for fun, so I'm sorry if the gameplay is cringy. Anyway, World of Warcraft was the very first native M1 game to run under the ARM architecture, unless you count chess. Pawn E4 takes F3. Wow plays easily at 4K max settings with 60 plus FPS. Or you can lower the settings to about medium and get over 110 FPS. At 1440p max settings, you'll be getting over 100 FPS. We saved Meredy. Playing at 1080p will obviously give you way over 100 FPS too, but the lower resolution can be noticeable, so just play at 1440p. Previously, Black Ops 3 was only supported on AMD GPUs, but last year, Apple proved that it could work fairly well on M1. The major downside for the Mac version of Black Ops 3 is that it doesn't have cross-play with Windows. So you can only play multiplayer against other Mac users and no one plays the game so you just have to play by yourself and it's lonely. At 1080p high settings the frame rate is 70 to 100 FPS. At 1440p medium it drops down to 60 to 100 FPS. And finally at 4k medium the frame rate is like 40 FPS on average. So yeah, I don't suggest 4K for this one. Aspire used to port lots of COD games to Mac, and now they don't. I hope that in the future they can return back to this, because this is the only COD that remains on Mac. Dirt 4 is the best racing game on Mac at the moment, along with Dirt Rally 1. We don't get many high quality racing sims on Mac anymore, which is sad. Anyway, Dirt 4 isn't very demanding. It's actually supported on some Macs back to 2013. So it should be no surprise that the game is blazing here on M1 Max. 120 FPS gameplay at high settings when either at 1080p or 1440p resolution. Excellent. Even at 1440p Ultra, the game is still getting over 100 FPS. You can play at 4K high to really appreciate the graphics and the game will get 60 FPS on average, so that's still pretty good. Previously, Borderlands 3 required an Intel Mac with an 8GB dedicated graphics card, but M1 last year proved this to be old news. So how is it doing on M1 Max? Uh, well, the game comes with a benchmark mode. At 1080p high, the average FPS is 48.49. At 1080p medium, the average FPS is 
and I ran this benchmark again and again and again, and it's always about the same. Sadly, there is still too much stutter to have a good time here. I was really hoping Borderlands 3 would be so much more playable here on M1 Max. The Mac version has significantly higher requirements than the Windows version. But let's not forget, unlike Borderlands 1 and 2 being optimized for Intel Macs by Aspire Media, this third game was done in-house by Gearbox Software. Perhaps they are not as experienced working with Mac hardware compared to Aspire. Here we have a remake of the original Myst. The new Myst has the iconic game worlds fully created in free roam 3D environments using Unreal Engine 4. Similar to Baldur's Gate 3, this is the only Mac game I know of that supports AMD FSR 1.0. You can easily play at 1080p, high quality, and put super sampling quality to quality, and you'll get a locked 120 FPS. Deus Ex Mankind Divided was one of the most demanding games to play on the first gen M1 chip. In fact, I didn't advise playing it last year, but you can definitely enjoy it here on M1 Max. Mankind Divided comes with another handy benchmark mode. At 1080p high, we're seeing 77.5 FPS. Lowering the quality to medium maybe isn't worth it as the average FPS jumps up to only 82 to 84.3 FPS. At 1440p high, we're seeing 51.3 FPS. Playing at this resolution with this type of frame rate was previously only possible on an Intel Mac with an 8GB or better dedicated graphics card. Last at 4K medium, we're seeing 38.4 FPS. I guess it's up to you on whether that equals playable performance at 4K. The Total War series has always been known to be very CPU intensive. So how is it doing here on the 10 core CPU in the M1 Max? We can get a good look thanks to the included benchmark tool in Troy. At 1080p high, the game gets 90 FPS. If you want over 100 FPS, you'll have to play at medium settings. At 1440p high, which is above the recommended settings for the Intel Mac version, we're seeing 80.4 FPS. Or you can play at 4K high for 52 FPS. If that is not acceptable performance for you, you can lower the quality to medium at 4K for 60 FPS. I don't know much about Minecraft. What I do know is that the version of Minecraft that you download from the official website is not fully native on M1 and it runs under Rosetta. The performance is still acceptable uh, but I would definitely lower the settings a little bit in order to get a more smooth frame rate. You can also play this game natively on M1. To do this, you'll need to download MultiMC. I've included a tutorial on how to install and set up this application by Andrew in the video description. This will improve the game's performance quite a bit. Sorry, I'm playing against bots and I still suck at CSGO. Like, I'm so bad at this game and I've played it so much. Anyway, at 1080p high, the game is getting over 80 FPS. If you want a much higher FPS for competitive gameplay, medium will give you well over 100 FPS. Y yeah, I wish the performance was better, but don't forget, Valve still have not updated this game with Metal support. It's still running under OpenGL. At 1080p high, Below Zero is only getting 40 to 60 FPS, which for me is disappointing. To get around 60 FPS, you'll have to lower the quality preset to medium with Motion Blur off and Bloom off. I imagine the performance may get even worse as you start to build things, explore, fight creatures and so on, but I have no idea what the heck is going on in this game. Again, 
I, I, I don't know how to play Civ 6. No idea. Plus, the benchmark tool isn't really working for the Mac App Store version. It's just not showing accurate data for me. But thankfully, the game is compatible with Apple's Quirts debug. So here I'm playing at 2K Ultra, and the frame rate is well over 90 FPS, which is pretty good. Disco Elysium is another native ARM game on Steam for M1. I wouldn't say it's the most, you know, high-end game out there, but it's definitely one of the most polished RPGs out there today, and it actually won the best Mac game of the year on the Mac App Store in 2020. The game plays at 2K Mac settings with a locked 120 FPS. It's stuck at 60 FPS when 4K is enabled, but I guess that is because my monitor doesn't support 120 Hz at 4K. Dota, 1080p best looking, provides about uh, 100 FPS. Lowering the settings to medium provides about 120 FPS. If you want a higher resolution, I advise 1440p medium settings. This will give you well over 100 FPS. Yep, another MOBA for you. League of Legends now supports the Metal API, so it runs much better on Intel and Apple Silicon based Macs than before. I'm playing at native MacBook Pro resolution and very high graphics. This provides 90 plus FPS. I tried lowering the resolution and graphics quality, but the game would never get above 96 FPS, which is weird. But maybe you'll have different results. Definity Original Sin 2 is doing pretty well on M1 Max. Not as good as Baldur's Gate 3, but for a game that isn't native, it's doing okay. Right here I'm playing at 2K Ultra, and it's getting over 100 FPS when you are just exploring. But it can go down to 70 FPS during combat. I definitely do suggest trying this one at 4K Ultra though, because, I mean, it's gorgeous and very playable at this frame rate. What do you think of the performance on offer with M1 Max? I think for some games it's great and others not so much, but that just comes down to games not being optimized as usual. If you expect M1 Max to be amazing for gaming, it's... it's not. Yes, the hardware and offer has way more potential than previous generation 15 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, but the main issue we have is limited native Mac game compatibility. If devs see that there is an audience here on M1, who knows, maybe they will consider it as a place to publish their games. So let's keep pushing devs to port their games to M1. Anyway, leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple M1 Gaming related. My name's Stewie and thanks for watching.